Today I'm going to show how you can build a single page application in Bubble. I'm here in the dashboard for one of my Bubble apps and you can see that when I click on one of the buttons at the side here, we're not loading a new page URL every time. We're simply navigating between the relevant tabs. We can do it super quick and it just lends itself to a really nice user experience. If we contrast that with another Bubble app I've built, which is a more traditional multi-page app, you'll see here if I click on a certain section of the app, it has to load up here and it's just taking a bit longer. So I'm here in a new bubble app and I've created a page called dashboard. There's nothing on it at the moment. And instead of dropping elements onto this page, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna make use of bubbles reusable elements. So we're gonna add a new reusable element and we're gonna call this sidebar nav. And this is effectively gonna be that section at the side of the app that navigates between the various sections. I'm gonna make this a floating group rather than a group as you'll see there would be a good reason for that, as we'll discover in a minute. I'm going to give it a column layout, and I'm going to set the width to be 320. Also put in the min width of 320, and then a min height of 700. I've already created the layout for you know this navigation, and in the interest of time, I'm just going to paste that in here. And straight away, you can see we have this really nice sidebar nav. So that's created here under reusable elements. And now we're going to go back to my dashboard. And I'm going to go down to reusable elements and I'm simply going to drop this on the page here. So straight away you can see this is taking up the full width now. We don't want that. So we're actually going to give this a fixed width of 320. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to need to build these three pages, home, inbox and integrations. I'm not going to go into detail on actually building a full page. For illustrative purposes, we are going to create three pages and we'll navigate between them. But before we get on to building those pages, what we're going to do is we're going to drop in another group and we're going to drop this on the main page here. We're going to call this group, group main views container. And this is essentially going to house the three different sub pages that we're going to build shortly. We're going to give this a column layout and we are going to set a margin on the left hand side for this of 320. You can see there then it's not going to be overlapping with the sidebar now that we've already created. I'm going to make this not a fixed width. We're going to give it a min width of 320. We'll give it a min height of 500. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create something for the home tab. So you can see that's the one that's highlighted by default. So we're going to create something so that when a user clicks on home, they're brought to a certain page of our single page app. And again, we're not going to actually put anything on the page. We're going to go back to our reusable elements. I'm going to call this one views home. We're not going to clone it from anything. And then we're going to do some quick settings here. We're going to give it a column container layout, which for DUI builder of 1280. And we'll give it a min height of, let's say, 500. And let's say we're just going to put something to represent home. So we'll just say this is the home page. And we'll remove that style, put it in the middle center line the text and we will also put it in the middle here so we have this not in too much to it at the moment but this is again just for illustrative purposes then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our dashboard page and we're going to drop in that reusable element so let's go down here you can see views home is now a reusable element and uh, we just drop that in our main group there we can see now if we look at our element tree we have that group main views container and that has our first view in it it might not be a bad time just to preview our app just to see what this looks like at the moment. So you can see we have the left, uh, on the left section we have home highlighted. We have this is a home page for our home page section. We want to do a couple of things. We want to navigate between various tabs and you can see everything is very static at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more view for inbox. So I'm going to go down here going to add a new reusable element and call this one inbox we're going to clone this from the views home view that i previously created and it's going to say this is the inbox and then we're going to go back to our dashboard and we're going to drop that view in as well so let's go down here and we'll go to inbox and we can drop this in that container as well so if we reload our page this obviously isn't going to be what we want because we can have this is the inbox and this is the home page. We really only want this is the home page and then move to inbox at a time of our choosing. So what we're going to do is 
we are going to hide both of these elements by default. So we're going to collapse that when it's hidden. Now it's not going to be visible on page load. And we're going to do the same for our other views there. We'll get rid of that and collapse when hidden. And now if we reload our page, we will not see anything load in terms of sections there. We're now going to build a workflow so that when home is clicked here, we're going to change the URL to the existing URL, but just put home on the end of it. We're then going to use that to show the home page group that we've just hidden. So what we're going to do is we're going to first of all set up some option sets. So if you go into your database and you go to option sets, I'm going to create a new option set called navigation. And I'm going to create a new option called home. Then I'm going to go back to my sidebar nav. And what I'm going to put in there is when this button here, home, is clicked on, we're going to go to a page. And the page we're going to go to is dashboard. And we're going to send arbitrary text. And the arbitrary text we're sending is get an option. We're looking at the navigation option, option set. And we're going to get that home. And you'll see me do one more thing. We're going to send home display, which is, which is actually home itself. What you can do is you go back into your database. You can modify the attributes. You could change that display to anything you want. I'm going to leave it as home. So now if we refresh our page, you'll see we're already on the dashboard page. And we're navigating to the dashboard page again when we click on this button. But the difference is we're going to see home pop up at the end of the URL. So I click on that, you'll see home has now popped up. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our dashboard and we're going to use conditionals to show the home page when home is in the URL here. So let's just do that. If we go to our views and go to views home, and if we go, I might actually just change this views because it's annoying me. So instead of having inbox, I'll do views inbox. If I go to the home, it's not going to be visible on page load, but when get data from page URL, what we're going to use here is the path segments as a list type. And the type is going to be navigation because again, that's the name of the option set that we created. And we're going to do item number two. And the reason we're doing item number two is because you can see here, dashboard is item number one, home is item number two. I know there's a version test in there, but that's really just because we're in development mode. In production mode, this isn't going to be there. So think of this as your kind of, you know, base URL. And then this is number one, number two, in terms of the path segments. So when get data from page URL, item number two display is, and again, we're going to get an option. And then we're going to use the navigation option set and home and its display. This element is visible and we'll take that. So I'm going to get rid of that home. We're going back to our dashboard. You'll see nothing is loaded at the moment. But when we click on home, this is the home page pops up. Now we didn't do one thing there and we didn't use the conditional formatting on the button here because you can see at the moment, even when home is not in the dashboard, this is being highlighted, even though no home page is being shown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sidebar nav and I'm going to go here. And I'm going to say when get data from page URL, path segments is list, navigation again, item number two, display is get an option, navigation, home, and it's display. So when that is the case, what we're going to do is we're going to have the font color like that, and we're going to have the background color like that. And then what we'll do is remove them by default. So we'll say color is going to be the same as the other buttons, and there's not going to be any background style. So we should see now is when we refresh that, nothing happens because again, home isn't in the, the URL. But if I click on home, the font is highlighted, and this is showing up. We obviously haven't done something right here on the background, so let's just do that quickly. Uh, we didn't have that saved down. So background style, black color, 
and then we'll go to background color and we'll have that so hopefully when we refresh this now we should see that kind of faded out blue as the background and sure enough that's the case okay so that's how we've gotten the first section to show up so we're just going to repeat this for the inbox and we can do it for the integration then as well quickly so let's go back to our database let's go to options we're going to create two new ones we're going to create inbox and we're also going to create integrations we'll create two of them and then we're going to go back to the design tab for our sidebar nav and what we're going to do is we're going to create two very similar workflows for inbox and integrations we're going to click on this we'll go to start edit workflow and what we can actually do is just save ourselves some time is we can copy that we can paste it in here so again we're going to the dashboard the data we're sending is arbitrary text but this time instead of homes display what we're actually going to be sending is inbox it's display so let's apply the same conditional formatting to the button here as well just so everything is nice and consistent and we can do a quick copy and paste job again just to save ourselves some time so the condition on the home button at the moment is as follows so let's copy that condition let's get out of that let's go on to our inbox button we'll go to conditional and we'll paste that in there and instead of item number two display being home we're just going to change that to inbox and then finally if we go back to our dashboard and we just show the inbox group when the paths are relevant so again we're just going to copy the condition we've already done for the homes view paste it into the inboxes view and again we're going to change home to inbox let's refresh our page you can see that when home is in the url this is the home page is showing up and we have that button highlighted but when we click on inbox you'll see the url changes to inbox at the end this is the inbox shows up as the view and home goes to nothing in terms of being highlighted let's quickly create another view for integration just finish this off add a new reuse element let's call this views integration we're going to clone it from views home and then this is the integrations this is the integrations page go back to our dashboard then to reusable elements views integrations put that in the main group there again we're going to say that it's going to collapse when hidden it will be collapsed when hidden it is not visible on page load but if we go to our views inbox again we're going to copy this condition really quickly go back up to views integrations paste that and then when item number two is views it is going to be visible uh, I can see we don't see oh we do integrations I should have said when item number two's display is integrations it is visible and uh, we'll finally do a small bit of formatting on the sidebar nav and again we'll copy the condition we've previously created copy that click on integrations and paste that in change display to integrations and let's load our app up okay so inbox in the url at the moment change the home we can see home is highlighted this is the home page comes up and uh, when we click on integrations and uh, nothing is happening yet because we seem to have forgotten to build that workflow so let's just do that very quickly and again super easy we can literally just copy the action we've already created paste it in and just change one thing and that one thing is the text here which is now going to be integrations so let's try it again we're on the home part by default app is loaded up and uh, instead of loading a brand new url each time we're just changing the last path segment so the inbox to integrations this is the integrations page super quick to go between each of the tabs now one thing that we didn't look at was what happens if there's nothing at the end here what i typically like to do is and you'll see now nothing comes up which isn't really ideal from a user experience point of view so what we're going to do is when there's nothing um in terms of being item number two in the path segment list what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight home and we're going to show home page as well so we're actually going to have two sets of conditions on home and i'm going to show you how to do that now if we go back into our sidebar nav what we'll do is we'll say we'll get rid of this at the moment this is being highlighted when item number two is that what we can do as well is we can put in an or statement 
and say get data from page URL, path segments as list, navigation, and then we can go to item number two, and we can just say if it's empty. So if it is empty, that's also going to happen. And before we refresh the page, actually, we'll just do something similar on the conditional for that view. You can see here we have our group, our nice three views, and it's a home page that we want to appear. There's nothing in item number two. So what we'll do is we will also put an or statement here. So again, very quickly, get data from page URL, path segments as list, navigation, and then item number two is empty. So let's refresh our dashboard. And there you go. You can see nothing is after dashboard in the URL, but home is still being highlighted. It's showing up as this is the home page. This section is being presented. Then if we go to inbox, inbox is showing up. Home vanishes. Inbox shows up. And then we go back to home. Home starts showing up again.